This is Math 99, Section 2.5, and we're going to talk about quadratic equations. And I know that um, many of you have seen them before. Uh, this is something that falls under the prereq for this class. I want to remind you of a couple things. I want to remind you how to graph. I also want to remind you um, how to use the quadratic formula and that sort of thing. And then we'll talk about complex numbers as well, which would be the square root of the negative number uh, involved that. So quadratic equations are anything that comes in this form, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. This is a quadratic uh, expression. If it's an equation, we would set it equal to something, right? Equation equals. And notice that a, b, and c are just numbers. So that's, that's what we mean when we talk about a quadratic equation. Uh, a can't be zero. Uh, b, and c could, b and c could both be. So it has an x squared in it. It doesn't have x to a higher power in it. That, that makes it a quadratic. So let's start with something like uh, uh, x squared plus 3x minus 40. And again, not an equation at this point, just an just a expression. But one of the things that you work on uh, is factoring these. And um, if I factor this, I actually just kind of know by looking at it that this would factor to uh, x plus 8 times x minus 5. And you might, you might see that as well. And here's how I know that that's what it's factors to. Um, so this is factoring. I'm just going to think about going the other direction. The other direction would be multiplying. Uh, if I multiply this out, in other words, if I had uh, an x plus 8, that's x long, that's 8 long, multiplied by an x minus 5, that's x long, that's negative 5 long, whatever that means. Um, x times x is x squared. 8 times x is 8x, x times negative 5 is negative 5x, <laughs> sorry, and 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. And if I combine up some like terms there, notice I get uh, x squared. And then if I combine those, 8x minus 5x, I get the 3x. So notice that these two values added to that middle term. And then it would be plus whatever 8 times negative 5 is. That gives me that negative 40. So when I'm factoring these, if this leading coefficient is a 1 out here, I'm looking for things that add to that middle term but multiply to that, uh, to that second term. So I'm going to go back to that original expression that I wrote and set it equal to 0. So now that I have this quadratic equation that's equal to 0, I can think about how do I solve it. And one of the ways to solve it is to factor this. And one way to factor, and this is a one out here, is things that multiply to negative 40 add to 3. I know I've already solved it up here, but I just want to emphasize things that multiply to negative 40. If I don't see it right away, I'm just going to list factors of negative 40. And then just keep going until I get things that add to 3. Uh, 4 and negative 10, and so on. And eventually, I'll come across uh, 8 and negative 5. Now that I know that I have that, this factors to x plus 8 times x minus 5 equals 0. And so that's, that's great. It's factored. But what I'm trying to do when I solve this is I'm trying to find the x values that make this a true statement. Like I, I want to be able to plug those values back in, and it, the left-hand side evaluates to 0. So now what I, we do is we take advantage of uh, the 0 product. And the 0 product property actually just kind of states something that you know. Uh, if you multiply two things together and you get 0, it has to be 0. At least one of them has to be 0. So A has to equal 0 or a B has to be 0. And that's not an exclusive or. This means or both. They could both be 0. So notice what we've done. We've taken this statement. We've written it as a product. We've written it as two things multiplied together. So now what I know is this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. So x must equal, subtract 8 from both sides, add 5 to both sides, and we're there. I want to pause the video right now and just do these, and then just kind of fast forward to the answers. Um, make sure that you feel good about it. That's great. And if you want to watch the next couple minutes as I do them, uh, that's fine as well. So I have a quadratic here, and it's equal to 0. So I'm going to look for things that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1, 1x. So negative 6, uh, negative 1 and 6 
negative two and three. Oh, those add to one. That must be it right there. So this factors to x minus two times x plus three. What makes this a zero? Two. What makes this a zero? Negative three. I usually list those in ascending order. Those are my values. If I plug negative three back in to the x box, this makes this zero. If I plug two back in, it makes it zero. So there's that one. Next one, factor this. Things that multiply to negative uh, 21 and add to negative 4, 7. Well, that makes positive 4. So if I went 3 and negative 7, that would, make, that would give me negative 4. So there's my values right there. x plus 3, x minus 7. What makes this a 0, 3? Uh, negative 3, sorry. What makes this a 0, 7? Here's my values for that one. Uh, x squared minus 25. Now, you might recognize this as what's called the difference of squares. And we'll, we'll come back and talk about that in just a sec. Uh, if you don't, think of it as this. We have zero x's. So you could still say what multiplies to this adds to this. Um, 1 and negative 25. 5 and negative 5. There they are. 5 and negative 5. So x plus 5. x minus 5 equals 0. What makes this a 0? What makes this a zero? There's my two values that make this a true statement. Uh, difference of squares, just to remind you, uh, states that if you have uh, a plus b times a minus b, these are called conjugates, where this plus and this minus are opposites, but the a and the b are the same. If I multiply this out, I get a squared minus b squared. Notice this is like the difference of two squares, x squared minus five squared, would factor to x plus 5 times x minus 5. All right, so there's some factoring when x is 1. Uh, if you fast forwarded to here, here's your answers. Now, what if that leading coefficient is not 1? Uh, here's another technique that you um, hopefully have seen. So what you want to do is take these two terms first the a and the c, and multiply them together. Now, treat that like it's the c value and, this, and the a value is a 1. In other words, we want things that multiply to 36, but still add to that middle term. And really, like on these ones up here, we're, we're doing that here, but since that's a 1, negative 21 times 1 is negative 21. Like we don't need to worry about it. But this is how it generalizes. Let's see, factors of 36, 1, and 36, 2, and 18, uh, 3, and 12. There they are. Those add to 15. Now, those aren't our answers that fall right out. Here's what we do now. We take this 15, and we split it up into 3 and 12. So, in other words, I'm going to rewrite this as 4x squared, split up that 15x. And you can go any order you want. I'm going to say plus 12x, plus 3x, plus 9. You could switch those two, and you'll still get the right answer. That's still equal to zero. OK, so now with this one, um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this grouping. So I'm going to grab these first two terms and grab these second two terms. So in these first two terms, I notice they have a 4 goes into both of them, and an x goes into both of them. So I'm going to take out a 4x. And notice if I divide this by 4x, that leaves me just an x. And if I take out a 4x from this 12x, I get a, uh, I'm sorry, x is gone. I just get a 3. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> uh, I just get a 3. Now I look at the next two and I do the same thing. These both have a 3 in them, so I'm going to factor out a 3. If I divide a 3 from 3x, I get x. If I divide a 3 from the 9, I also get a 3. Still equal to 0. Now here's what's great about this. Notice now that um, these both have an x plus 3 in them. In other words, these are both multiplied by x plus 3. So I can grab that x plus 3 and factor it out. So if I divide out an x plus 3 from both of these terms, all that's left here is a 4x, and all that's left here is a 3. Now it's fully factored. I have two things that multiply together to give me 0. So either uh, this has to equal 0, or this has to equal 0. So on this one, I could subtract 3 from both sides, divide by 4, 
One of my answers is negative three fourths. My other answer I can see is negative three. There they are. All right, taking a peek at this next one, uh, there's one more piece that I want to add to this factoring idea, and that's that um, we can factor something out at the start. Notice uh, this should be cubed. Let's fix that. There we go, that's what I meant to write. Notice these all have an x in them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out an x. That leaves me a negative three. If I take out one x from x cubed, I get x squared. If uh, negative five, if I take out an x from x squared, I get an x. And negative two, I already took out the x equals zero. So notice I have an x, I, I factored it out. That can sit, and then I'm gonna to go to factor what's left in here. So this is, leading coefficient is not one, so my multiplier, uh, negative three times negative two is positive six. So I want things that multiply to six, but add to negative five. Um, since it adds to a negative, this is positive, both these should be negative. So negative one, negative six, that multiplies, that's not it. Negative three, negative two, that's it right there. Okay, so I still have the x sitting out here. I'm gonna break up that middle term into a negative three x and a negative two x. Notice it's still equal to negative five x, which is broken up, minus two. And so then here, x is still sitting there. I could factor a negative 3x out of these. That leaves me an x. That leaves me a plus 1. I could factor a negative 2 out of these. And since these both have an x plus 1 in them, I can factor it out. So I have x. That x just is sitting there. I take out that x plus 1. I'm left with a negative 3x minus 2. And now I have three things multiplied together that equal zero. So x equals zero is one of my answers. Or x plus one equals zero, that gives me another answer. Or negative three x minus two equals zero, which gives me another answer. Sorry about that. So x is zero, negative one. Notice I'm not making a big deal about listing them in ascending order. On here I add two to both sides. Divide by negative three, so it would be negative two thirds. There's my three answers for that. All right, so we have all this factoring uh, ways that we can solve them. Now, factoring isn't always the only thing to do. Uh, let's say I had x squared equals eight, or x minus three squared equals 49. Okay, well, notice I have like something squared all alone. How about I just square root both sides to undo that square? So if I square root this side, I'm gonna square root eight. And here is the thing to remember, when you bring in a square root, a plus or minus comes with it. Because notice like whatever this is, it could be positive or negative, and if we square it, we still get a positive value. So uh, square root of x squared is x. This leaves us plus or minus square root of eight. And I can break up that eight to a four times two, so square root of four times two, square root of two is two root two. So x equals plus or minus, so negative two root two, or positive two root two. Let's do another one like this. I've got something, this whole thing squared equals 49. So I'm gonna square root both sides. When you bring in a square root to undo a square, plus or minus comes with it. So this would be plus or minus seven. Square root of a square undoes itself. So I could add three to both sides. And notice that says plus or minus. That's gonna give me two answers. One of the answers being plus, three plus seven is 10. One of the answers being minus, three minus seven is negative four. There they both are. One more example like this. So I've got something squared plus 100 is equal to zero. Um, so let's just get the square all alone, and then and then we can square root both sides. So I'm going to subtract 100. Now square root. Plus or minus comes with it. X minus 5 is just there because the square root and the square canceled each other out. Square root of negative 100. Well, that's like the square root of 100 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 100, I know, is 10. The square root of negative 1. So square root of negative one is an imaginary number. And what we use for that is just i. 
So whenever I have square root of 100, uh, square root of negative, there's an I involved. So that's an imaginary unit. That's a, that's a different type of number than 5. But it's still a number, so 10i. I add 5 to both sides. So my answers are going to be 5 uh, plus or minus 10i. All right, last thing I'd like to show you is quadratic formula. And um, you've seen it before. But the quadratic formula states, if you have a quadratic in this form, then x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So what this does is this just like encapsulates work to solve these. So if I had an equation, um, let's just go back to one that we've already done. We've already done this one. So notice both of these meet that condition, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Then this. So the way that we can use this then is, first off, we can identify what our a, b, and c values are. a is the value that's with the x squared, so there's a one here. b is the value with the x, so b is negative four. c is the value that's just, the, that's just ones, so c is negative 21. Oh, that looks like a four. Over here, a is four, b is 15, and c is nine. Now the rest of it is just plugging in those values and going. Now, if you feel comfortable with this, give it a go. Just fast forward the video and check your answers. If not, here's how I would do it. So here, plug in 15 for b. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four, times a times c all over 2a. So I've got negative 15 plus or minus the square root. Grab my calculator. Let's see, 15 squared, 225, uh, minus 16 times 9, or 9 times 36, I will be, I'm sorry, 4 times 36, 144, all over 2 times a, which is 8. I keep going here, uh, 225 minus 144, I'm being so lazy, I don't mind that. 81, uh, square root of 81 is 9, and notice it's plus or minus, so negative 15 plus 9, negative 6, negative 15 minus 9, negative 24. And then if I reduce those, uh, looks like negative 3 fourths, uh, negative 6 fourths, negative 3 halves. Work is done. If I do it for this one, b is negative 4, c is negative 21. It, I'd set it up like this. Negative b is, so it was, notice it's a negative b, so it would be negative, negative 4. B squared, negative 4 squared. Make sure when you square a negative, it's the negatives inside the squaring. Otherwise, it won't square the negative. 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. And we've already done this problem, so we know that the answers are going to be what we got before. This is how you would set it up. I'll let you evaluate it out. And the answer that we got before for that one somewhere around here. Negative three and seven is what we should get. Uh, one thing that can happen while you're doing the quadratic formula is you could do a bunch of work and you might end up with something like six plus or minus the square root of 51 over nine. And square root of 51 isn't gonna give you a, give you a whole number. Just leave it like that. This is, this is a fine answer. It shows both of them. Six plus root 51 over nine, six minus root 51 over nine. And if you get an imaginary number, Let's see, it's 3 plus square root of uh, negative 7. Again, just take out the i. Square root of 7i over 9. Okay, uh, post any questions that you have uh, in the forum and take a look. Give it a go.